All right. I'm excited to have Asaf Pashut uh, here in the studio today to talk a little bit about what you're building with Chefy Robotics. Chefy is a really interesting company in that it's actually making a home cooking robot. Asaf, that's a tough category. We're going to dive into that. But before we do, let's hear a little bit about your, your background. Tell people, you know, your journey and how you got to where you are today. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So I grew up on food since I was, I mean, my mom cooked for me and my brothers every single day growing up homemade foods. Uh, I grew up in Israel. And so food is just a huge, huge, huge part of our culture. Um, and yeah, I ended up going to Berkeley, studied neuroscience, learned a little bit of it about engineering, some biology, some chemistry, some, a lot of different, a lot of different things. Interesting. Um, and then I ended up going into the obvious next step, which is open restaurants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say the obvious next step is making a food robot, but that's, that's one step later. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> No, that's like 14 years later. Yeah, I, I opened restaurants and my parents were surprised, as you can imagine, and so was everyone else. Um, but the I, I just thought that the food industry was broken. Uh, I think now there's so many documentaries about that. But back then, it was it was most people didn't understand really what was going on, I think. Uh, and uh, yeah, I wanted to fix it. I wanted to create some healthier brand and, 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 and sell um, and just kind of promote that. And, and and really, I, I my 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 dream was to kind of tackle McDonald's, really <laughs> <laughs> just compete with McDonald's. Uh, so yeah, pretty ambitious. And then um, I had that for many years, did very well in Silicon Valley, and then during COVID, everything just went yep. nosedive. Uh, I took a year off, went to live in Israel. My mom was there, a lot of cooking again. <laughs> you can see a common theme. And then at some point, I think I was looking at my kitchen and just thought, how freaking cool would it be if I could just talk to it and it could cook for me? Right. That, that was basically the, that the, was, the crazy kind of epiphany. That was epiphany. And, you know, it's so interesting that you decided to head into the consumer kitchen because you spent so much of your career in restaurants, which, by the way, I think some of the most successful food robotics entrepreneurs have started restaurants and then done that. John Ha uh, with Bear Robotics is a good example where he created his little mobile waiter robot. But you decided to go into the consumer kitchen, not make a back of house restaurant chef robot. Why did you look at the consumer space? Yeah, so we actually started our V1 was a commercial kitchen. We built this entire commercial kitchen with a robotic arm uh, on a rail. I'll show you the video, but it's, um, we j basically, we saw something that most people don't see, which is, Everyone's going in this direction, commercial, 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 uh, restaurants, fast food. And I hate fast food. It's why you wanted to kill McDonald's. <laughs> I did. I, I, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good for people, animals, the world in general. And, and so I don't want to contribute my time there. And then looking at the house, nobody's touching it. Mm. Everybody knows there's going to be robotics in the home. Everyone knows that, but no one touched that space. So, um, and, and it's, it's a hard space. You're right. It's uh, at what price point you come in and, and consumer. And there's so many different segments of consumers. Um, but the appeal of one being the first two offering people this Mecca Jetsons kind of dream where you walk into your house, talk to your kitchen and cooks for you. That was a sexy idea. That was, that was something worth, worth working for. Uh, and, and yeah, I'll tell you the first time that Sheffy, I ever talked to Sheffy and it started cooking was like this, just like a game, sh like a mind shift. It was, it was weird. It was, it was, it was really, really cool. Uh, and uh, that's kind of when we knew that this is, this is happening. This is, this is real. You know, you guys, no one's broken into this space because it is, like you said, difficult. There have been some early attempts like Moly, I think back in 2015 started, you know, there's been, you know, the last couple of years, a lot of countertop folks building essentially some level of automation yeah. within a self-contained uh, countertop uh, appliance. Yours is different than what I've seen out there and that it's not this big robotic arm. It's not something that says fits on the countertop. It looks like um, maybe some of the kind of robotic make line, make lines I've seen in, in a sense for, for the commercial mm -hmm. space, but not quite because uh, it does fit into a countertop, uh, a consumer basically granite countertop, or whatever it's embedded essentially into the kitchen. Um, yeah. Talk a little yeah. bit about yeah. that. Like why you decided to do what you do with your design. 
Yeah, I mean, like I said, we started with a big robotic arm, right? And I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours with it. And one, they're expensive. Two, they're difficult to maintain. Three, they're dangerous. This thing, the first time we turned it on, and we got it from China, and their safety setting was like the lowest possible <laughs> safety. So it started grinding itself into the into the the table oh my on gosh. which it was standing. Yeah, that's not good. Dangerous stuff. Yeah, man. yeah, and you don't want that in your house with your kids and your and yeah. And so, and, and, and then, and then beyond that, it, the idea is that I think technology shouldn't be in our face. It should be hidden, embedded in our walls, kind of like electricity. We, we have it. It's the best thing ever. We don't even realize it because it's just in the walls, right? And then we use it when we want. It's very on trend, by the way. We're seeing that in the, in the space, like a lot of big appliance brands are saying, think about this idea, essentially the, invis the invisible kitchen. Essentially, where technology recedes into the background. You thought about it, but within a robotic context. Correct. Correct. Right. So instead of throwing some big thing at you, it's more like, no, we'll blend into your existing kitchen design, which people really, really uh, spend a lot of time and thought into their kitchen designs. So we want to blend in. When will I be able to buy this? When can I go out and say, hey, Chefy, come in, install this? And what does that involve? Does this some involve like a couple folks showing up and installing it and kind of tearing apart my kitchen a little bit? No, no. So not exactly. So uh, first of all, we're already taking paid reservations. So there's a bunch of people that already paid $250 to reserve their Chefy. Um, late next month, uh, we're going to be showcasing our Beta 2 model, which is basically what your chefy would look like stainless steel so forth the the, the beautiful kind of vision um and th at that point we'll be taking deposits so 50 percent down 50 percent upon delivery and when chefy arrives at your door yeah we install it but here's the beauty it doesn't require any permanent damage to your kitchen so the way we do it is we just remove the doors from your upper kitchen cabinet that's like four screws and we slide chefy in and that's it Basically, within two hours, the whole installation takes two hours, and you have now a, an autonomous kitchen in your house. That's amazing. All right, and we can uh, put some pictures of it in the post we write about this so people can get in. I also think there's a few demos of it online. I do want to talk to you about yeah. what everybody probably asks you about now when you see them at parties is, okay, what was it like going on Shark Tank? Um, obviously, going in front of the sharks is like a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I know that some of them are notably – robotic skeptical mark cuban probably being the more, most uh so tell us a little bit about that experience going on there and what happened i mean the experience it's, it's kind of it's it's hard to describe man it, it was the hardest day of my life we spent because most people you know a lot of companies they come with this little app yeah or a little gadget or whatever we came with a freaking we built a kitchen a kitchen set <laughs> ourselves yeah I, my team and i built the whole set we've never done it before we had a ship all of our equipment and Sheffy to Los Angeles, stayed in our investor's home, <laughs> built it in his backyard. It was wild. That's crazy. Spent two months practicing the pitch over and over. We have a bunch of videos we're going to release where I'm like doing push-ups and reciting the pitch. My friend is like kicking me and like, and like slapping me in the face, literally to get ready for the pressure. Shark Tank boot camp. Shark Tank boot camp is what it was. Seriously. Yeah. Well, he went to the Israeli army, so he was... <laughs> He's a, uh, he's a, uh, he's like, we're gonna do this. This is how we're gonna do it. Okay, uh, but uh, yeah, the moment itself. I mean, it was so stressful. I mean, so many things could have gone wrong. So many things. We had to ship it from one. We have to move it from one set to another. And then once we were there, they tell you you only have one shot. It's the Eminem song, right? Oh my yeah, gosh. One shot. Don't blow it. And then like, what if the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth doesn't work? And everything worked smooth. Uh, the sharks are really, really nice. I think Mark was in a bad, apparently he was in a bad, in a bad mood because someone before us pitched and pissed him off. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Um, but he was pretty, I think he was, he was kind of in disbelief that we could have built something like this that actually has some IP in it without spending millions of dollars, which mm. is most, most companies do. Uh, and I get it. I mean, I come from a restaurant industry. Who am I? I'm, you know, to him, I'm just like a restaurateur. I'm not an engineer, uh, but yeah, we've, we've been able to do it. So, yeah, I mean, he probably exciting. saw, I mean, if you look at the track record, right? Like the zooms of the world spent hundreds of millions of dollars from SoftBank, and you've seen others race, you know, tons of money to build these things and, 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 to, and they burn it, they, they burn, burn through it. it. Yeah. So you, they have, you know, 
lots of stacks of management to kind of burn through all that. Obviously it takes, takes a lot of money to get great robotics engineers and you guys are able to do affordably. Um, so you ultimately did get a, I think you got a deal with Kevin O'Leary. Talk about that. Yeah. With Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, I, um, yeah, he, he saw what we saw, which is there's a high end market. So we're, we're starting at a high end, at a high end, right. Um, at the high end pro, pro, uh, as a high end product. Obviously our goal is to be in, millions and millions of homes and that's what's going to happen but we're going to start like this um because we don't we don't want to we don't want to have thousands of orders right off the bat right. we're not going to be able to deliver and we're going to have recalls and it's a common mistake let's go like this let's go sl let's go slow and steady and and actually pay attention to each customer and then as we ramp up production then then um then lower the prices and so forth uh, and frankly, there are people lining up to have a Sheffy at this price, po price point with no problem. Uh, and so, I mean, we're, we're actually very, very, very reasonable relative to, let's say, Moly, for example, or or even just high-end premium appliances in the home. People are spending $50,000 on a range hood, okay? They're spending $100,000 yep, yep. sometimes on these crazy, you know, uh, La Cournu and Wolf Sub-Zeros. What is you know? this future channel look like so one of the things I, I i'm trying to conceptualize and think a lot about and and we look as we look 10 years in the future is hey i want this cool cooking robot maybe i can't cook or maybe i i, I maybe i'm getting older and it's just harder for me how do i get this thing in the kitchen so is it a matter of like saying hey there's a, like a home system integrator for food robotics is it like there's an appliance like maybe a, a ge whirlpool ultimately acquire chefy or, or builds a competing line or you become like the next whirlpool and then someone buys this, do they go to uh, Best Buy, see it, and then have a, someone come and sell? What does this channel look like in the future? I mean, honestly, we've designed it, like I said, to be installed in existing kitchens. Okay. We want this in tiny kitchens, in large kitchens, large homes, small luxury apartments in Manhattan. It doesn't matter. We fit into existing standard kitchens. Uh, where it's going to go I don't know. I, I think I think Chefy can maintain a very high. I, I don't. I don't want the quality of the product to go down. That's that's okay. important to me. I don't want this right now. It's all it's 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 all U.S. made. It's all it's all made here, and that quality is super important. Whether it's going to be available at uh, <laughs> Home Depots or Best Buys in the future, that's uh that's time will tell. I guess uh, over many years, I would say. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's probably going to be built in, kind of like standard ovens and microwaves and fridges that you have in every kitchen. You walk into somebody's home in 15 years, if they don't have a chefy, it's like they're in the Stone Age. Like, what are you doing? What's going on? You don't have a smartphone? You know, it's kind of like that. Yeah, That's people walk say. into like a, a modern high end kitchen. They they see Wolf appliances, or they see you know Gen Air or whatever. Say, oh, oh, you think that new status symbol 15 years from now, like, oh, he has a chefy. Is that, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's going to be ubiquitous. I mean, th th it just doesn't make sense that it doesn't. I mean, I'm, like I said, you have to experience it to kind of feel. When I we started cooking with Chefy, then I go to my mom's house and there's like pans and pots and, and all these things and, and like a mess in the kitchen. I'm like, I don't know, my mind has just shifted. Like this is the old way, now it's the new way. Uh, obviously, there's a nice hybrid middle ground there where you can still cook. You're not, it's not like you have to give Chefy every single meal to do. You, cooking is fun. I love cooking. It's just that I don't have time every single day to do it. In a you said you started at the high end. And as you guys grow, I mean, obviously, this is your first product out there. You're, you're taking orders. If we look a couple years down the line, five years down the line, is there going to be a range? Like maybe at some point you have a countertop thing that people would just buy and just plop down or take with them. What does that look like? It's possible. Look, a lot of things are possible. We want to make sure we're one, not widening the number of products that we, you know, spreading ourselves thin, right? Once you spread yourself thin, your the quality goes down. And second is we don't want to go to Vitamix, the, the the what are they called? All these little countertop nimbles and stuff, right? We want to stay. The mm. value proposition of Chefy is it's restocked once a week, and you walk away. You go to the gym, you go to the office, you go hang out with your kids, you go watch Netflix. That's it. Once a week. As soon as you dumb it down and you, and you bring it down the volume and so forth, and now it's just a countertop, then again, you have to restock every single meal. You have to think a lot more about every single thing, which is, it's just, it defeats purpose. So 
Yeah, that's great. Hey, well, Asaf, I'm looking forward to hearing you and connecting connecting with you in Seattle in June at the Smart Kitchen Summit. And where can people find out more about what you're doing at Sheffy.com? What Sheffy.com. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, we're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on, uh, we're on we're online. And for those of you just listening, it's C H E F E E dot com. Right. There you go. He's got the T-shirt on. All right, man. Way to represent. <laughs>